Hey everyone, before we get started on the video, I just wanted to introduce my new saddle pad line that I'm super excited about. They're available in jump or dressage cut, and there's a lot of colors available. The evergreen, which is the hunter green color, and the peacock, which is the blue, are available in limited quantities as they are almost sold out and they will not be restocked for a while. The champagne and pearl colors are brand new and are also available in limited quantities. They are very well priced at just $50 US or $65 Canadian. I tried to make the prices more reasonable so that people could afford to treat themselves to something that's high quality with a good sweat wicking underside and some fun designs without breaking the bank to the extent that some of the other big companies selling saddle pads right now are charging. You can get free shipping on orders over $150 Canadian and these pads are really nice. I got a nice sweat wicking ventilated underside. The satin is good quality and the crocodile leather is fake so no crocodiles were harmed in the making of it. You can order these at the link in my description below. Thank you so much. Aldora is a six-year-old Morgan mare and one of the horses that I started under saddle the most recently. When she first arrived to me, we mainly started working on tying as she had some anxiety about pulling back when tied. So to start with this, I would just loop the rope through a piece of twine and then hold the end of it so that I could apply and release pressure and reward her for submitting to the pressure and not panicking. This allowed me to control the situation a lot better and thereby keep her less anxious as we worked on tying. As she built her confidence, Confidence, I would gradually work towards getting her tied with a slip knot, still always to break away material for safety purposes. I very much disagree with the traditional patient's pull method where people hard tie their horses that pull back and force them to continue pulling back and panicking until eventually they stop. When they do stop, this is a result of learned helplessness, meaning that they've realized they cannot escape the situation and give up. It is a very negative mind space for an animal to be in and I am super against it. Not only that, it's also dangerous because the pressure that they inflict on themselves when pulling back is super damaging to the neck and the top of the head and the pole. You can do a lot of damage and permanently injure your horse from doing this. So this is why I never hard tie any horse and I also work on instilling confidence and calmness while they're being tied instead of just forcing them to put up with anxiety. The next thing that I started working with Aldora on after the tying was saddling and lunging her. Her owner had already saddled her in the past, so it wasn't completely new to her, but she wasn't totally confident with it. So I worked on this where she was being tied and I would heavily reward calm standing behaviors. And then also on the lunge line, I would reward her for listening to my voice commands and coming in. And this helped build her confidence on the lunge line as well as allowing her to realize that it's not just a one-sided endeavor. She does get paid for her work that she gives me. After she had the basic idea of lunging and giving to pressure while tied, we started ponying her. She was not totally comfortable being close to another horse at first, as you can see here. So we would do a few steps and then I would stop and give her treats. And then we continued this. And then gradually we would extend the amount of steps that we would ask her to do before giving her treats. I feed alfalfa pellets, which is why she's chewing a lot in this because it takes them a long time to chew. And I was rewarding her every few steps in the beginning of her ponying because she was not super comfortable with it and didn't really want to go near Percy initially. The purpose of ponying is so that it gives her kind of an emotional support horse and then when I eventually got on her it allows her to have a horse to lead her around without the rider having to put the pressure on and potentially cause more fear. It just makes it an easier concept because they're already learning how to follow a horse and then when you get on you can instill the leg aids even better because they're already knowing to follow the horse. I also teach the leg aids and voice commands from the ground first so it's it's not a shock for them. After she was comfortable with ponying, next up was backing her. The first day I backed her, I just bellied over her, which means I laid over the top of the saddle and had my hands on the other side of her and my legs on the opposite side, so that she kind of got the feeling of where my legs would be without actually having to carry a rider. And then we led her a couple steps at a time, rewarding every few steps as she was a little bit nervous about having me on her. And I did this for a couple of days because having my head sitting above her mimics the feeling of a predator a lot more than 
than bellying over flat does because you're sitting above them and this is where horses are the most vulnerable so once she was comfortable being bellied over we worked with me sitting up and same thing where she would be led a couple of steps and rewarded and then we worked on it this time with percy with the pony where she would be asked to do a few more steps than we expected of her last time the point of this is to do little small intervals so that she's not overwhelmed at any point. I don't want big scary reactions. I don't want the horses freaking out. So we do little things and reward them for what people might view as tiny little improvements or basically doing nothing. But for the horse, it's a lot. Having a person on top of them is a very natural position and it's naturally a fear inducing thing for a horse, especially a horse who is more cautious like Eldora. Eldora very much has the survivor mentality and is because of this very careful of her surroundings and cautious so this keeps her safer and she would be one of the horses who would fare a lot better in the wild because of this but it means that she needs more time to get used to things and get comfortable with them when she does get nervous her go-to thing is stopping and standing still which i actually don't mind because it's a lot safer than having big outbursts so when she stops and stands still and she's unsure of things i actually do give her the chance to kind of look around and compose herself before asking her to walk on because there's no point in drilling her or expecting too much. I like to use alfalfa pellets as treats because they take the horses longer to chew and they also buffer stomach acid. That's one of the big perks of alfalfa. But the fact that she has to chew longer when they're in her mouth means that it creates a nice light foam. And chewing is also a relaxing activity for horses. When they're eating and chewing, they typically are calmer than what they would be without the food. So I like using treats that take them longer to digest for this exact reason. And alfalfa pellets are also lower sugar and lower fat than some of the traditional treats on the market which means you can feed more of them especially to horses who are easy keepers or who might be sugar sensitive. After being ponied a few laps, the plan was to take her off of the lead rein and then just follow Percy. This is still mimicking ponying and it still gives the comfort of being attached to another horse, but it allows me to work on her steering more. Prior to doing this, I'm still helping steer her from the reins and I also worked on ground driving her and teaching her how to steer from the ground before ever getting on her. And that is very important to do. You need to instill an idea of the aids that you're gonna ask them under saddle before you ever get on them. So that's what I worked with with her beforehand and then also when we did eventually take off the lead rein it's not a big change for her because she's still doing the same thing that she did before but once she's off and not being ponied it means I can extend the space between her and Percy which helps take her out of her comfort zone but slower so that it's not overwhelming. One of the hard things about this arena is that there's horses turned out on either side of it and they do frequently run and play and this makes Eldora a little bit nervous. As you can see in this clip coming up, one of the horses in the field to the left of her starts running around and bucking and I just stop and let her look because I don't want her to get nervous or feel like she needs to have a flight reaction. So letting her stop and assess the situation and just watch is a really great way to get her to calm down and when she watches calmly, I actually reward that because again, if a horse is scared of something, 
something, I would much rather them stop and assess the situation and stand where they're comfortable while watching than push them on and have them have a bigger reaction. Stopping and watching what's going on calmly and kind of deciding whether or not it's a threat is actually a good reaction from the horse rather than spooking so this is something that I encourage and like I said before it doesn't really encourage them to stop frequently while riding because over time you will start to increase what you demand of them when you're on them so you can gradually expand how much you expect of the horse as they get more comfortable and quiet and this is exactly what I do with her and I also have been feeding her a lot in the beginning stages of her getting started which is why she's chewing so much because it does keep her calmer and it allows her a means of knowing that she seeks a reward so that there's a purpose behind what I ask her even if it takes her out of her comfort zone. In the first few days of her starting under saddle, I just did walk and steering drills like serpentines across the arena, walking her over poles, practicing halting, and all of this basic stuff. I didn't want to ask her for too much all at once or ask her to go forward to trot until she's way more comfortable at the walk, even while dealing with horses acting up in the arena beside her and seeing new stimuli that might be fear-inducing. There's no point in asking for more speed if the horse is not super comfortable at the walk because then you run the risk of having them be more stressed and having a bigger fear reaction. So I had several walk only days with her before I ever asked her to trot and the purpose of this was to keep her anxiety level as low as possible because I didn't want a big explosion because it would create more problems in the future for me and actually make it take longer than being more patient and going on her schedule. When I did start trotting her, we initially started out the exact same way I started out with walking her, which is asking for a few steps at a time and then rewarding those steps. And as she gets more comfortable, I extend the number of steps that I am asking of her. So when she got more comfortable, I'd ask her to trot down the entire long side and then eventually around the whole arena and whatnot. She would again prefer to go slow and come to a stop or walk if she was nervous of something. And if there was ever something scary happening outside of the arena, I allowed her to do this and then rewarded her for standing calmly because that's what encourages this calm behavior and the assessment of anything scary rather than continuing to up her level of anxiety and by because I took my time with getting her comfortable at the walk the trot went really well and we didn't get any of the behaviors like scooting forward or bucking or getting scared and spooking at the rider on them because she got comfortable with me sitting above her before I asked her to trot and you can see her ears flicking back and forth a lot she's listening to me and she's not super sure of what is going on at the trot and she's still building her confidence doing this but she trusts me enough to continue listening to the forward motion of my leg and to go forward without panicking and this is really important especially with more nervous horses you don't want to push them too hard because if you do get a big fear reaction it often sets you back a lot more than it would to just take your time in the first place and when working with nervous horses less is always more
Most of my work with her under saddle occurred in the arena in the beginning, and we built her confidence in the arena before I ever took her out of the arena. And when she does get taken out of the arena, the purpose of doing this is to kind of mimic what it would be like to be going on a hack. So she's going to a newer area, but it's within a space that she's more comfortable in, and it's not off property, so she can still see and smell all of her friends and the horses that she's comfortable with. And this is a very natural way to start introducing the idea of being outside of an arena in a new environment. So once she was going and steering fairly well in the arena and had good breaks and was going walk trot, I took her out of the arena and would hack her up and down the property where she could see new horses and go to the back of the property where she hadn't been before. And she's very alert and curious when she's in new places. Her ears are always forward and she likes to look around at her surroundings. And she's actually quite a forward walker in new situations. She doesn't back off particularly badly and has this natural drive to want to walk forward and do a bit of a power walk which is very very promising for a trail horse and I really like this about her and again if she ever sees something that she's unsure of she'll stop and assess it and it gives her the chance to kind of understand what's going on without panicking and this is something that I encourage and allow her to do because it's very intelligent of her and she keeps her energy level down by doing this and it's honestly one of my favorite things about her because some horses won't necessarily give you signs that they're concerned or they'll keep walking towards things that they're scared of and then they get too close and it's too overwhelming once they are close and then that's when you get a fearful reaction so for her stopping and like assessing things is a very intelligent and encouraging reaction from her that I really like and even while I'm hacking her out here I frequently would stop her and give her treats and feed her for calm behaviors and encourage that so in all these videos she's chewing a lot because I feed her often and she has the alfalfa pellets in her mouth and she even gets a light foam even though she's bitless because of the fact that she gets to lick and chew so much as she's eating her alfalfa pellets the next thing was her first time hacking off property and for Eldora she's more nervous trailering so this exacerbated her level of nerves when she gets off the trailer. So when we load her in the trailer we're super patient with her and we wait and give her time to assess the situation and get on herself. We never pressure from behind or try to chase a horse in because this does not instill confidence. So this is an important aspect of preparing her for a trail ride is how you load and unload them. Always rewarding them and giving them the decision to come forward themselves instead of trying to chase them into the trailer. Since her anxiety level was higher coming off the trailer, the goal is to get her walking right away because horses tend to calm down quicker when they're able to move instead of trying to hold them still. So we started walking and she initially was following Percy on the trails and then she actually did lead on her own for some of the ride, which is really good and brave, especially for a horse's first time out. She started out quite tense, but was naturally quite forward and had a desire to move forward, which again is something I really like. So we took her on the easiest parts of the trails and just walked her until she started to relax. And then as soon as she started to relax, we turned around and headed home and we actually had a few steps of trot on the way back. She got to see things like bridges while she was there and she did not really care at all about the bridges. She had a look at them but didn't pause at all when she was walking over. She just stuck her nose down to kind of check out what was going on which is a very smart reaction from a horse and I was really happy with her because trailering definitely is something that she finds harder and more scary so taking her to a new place brings in that extra level of anxiety because she's already having to do something that's out of her comfort zone to get there in the first place and then on top of that she's arriving at a new area which is fear inducing for her and she handled it really well we didn't really have any big spooks at all even though we had a lady approach us with a big big umbrella she just stopped and assessed the situation and i rewarded her and all in all she really impressed me and i was super proud of her and happy with her she's a very smart horse and has been such a pleasure to work with because of this and i really like working with horses like her even if they're more nervous and they have a harder time relaxing in new situations she's so intelligent and sensitive that if she develop her at a rate that keeps her at a lower level of anxiety so that she doesn't feel the need to react big then she just continues to try her heart out for you as her comfort zone builds and the trail ride was definitely the hardest thing for her so far because it was the most anxiety inducing thing recently because she had to do two big things but she handled it amazingly and was such a good girl 
Eldora is still with me for a couple more weeks, during which time we're going to work on getting her owner on her for her first ride, along with getting her more comfortable off property on trails. And then if I have time, I'm going to start working on baby steps of canter. I don't like drilling canter in the beginning because most of the balancing work and teaching the basics like steering and the beginnings of lateral work is done at the walk and trot and they can build their strength really well this way. So canter is more so just for teaching them the initial aid to pick up a canter. Um, so it's not something that I really recommend to do because a lot of the work is done at the walk and trot but I've had such a pleasure working with Eldor and I really like working with these sensitive and more nervous horses because they're usually incredibly smart and they'll try really hard if you give them a reason to trust you and with Eldor it's been super rewarding because I got to watch her change from being a little bit more cautious of me even when I was going to catch her to the point where when she even sees me walk by she's nickering and calling to me and when she's nervous she wants to come closer to me so building that relationship is so rewarding and important and I'm really excited to see how she continues to progress with her owner once she does go home.